Another question came in regarding um, sort of the concept of gradients. And the big question is, how do you know if you need a gradient? Well, to me, you know, the way I always put it is, you'll know. <laughs> if you're waiting forever for the last piece to come off, then you probably need a gradient. So there's a technical answer, and that is if, the, um, if all of your molecules have similar hydrophobicities, then you do not need a gradient. What that means is if you did a gradient, we typically do what we call a scouting run, 10 to 100% methanol or 10 to 100% acetonitrile, see where the molecules come off. If all of your peaks come off within 15% of one another, which means they're all coming off within 15% methanol or acetonitrile of one another, then you do not need a gradient. Would a gradient work? Sure. Would isocratic work? Sure. There's more than one right answer. So if all your molecules are, have similar hydrophobicities, they'll all come off the exact same mobile phase. That's fantastic. Uh, most of us, well, it depends what we're doing. If you're dealing with unknowns or you have a wide range of hydrophobicities, you're going to run a gradient, which means you're going to start with a very weak mobile phase, high polar, a lot of water, and then program up to a very strong mobile phase, which means 100% uh, methanol or 100% acetonitrile. In doing that, we'll be able to sweep basically everything. Um, and not only do we get our molecules of interest, but the way I think of it is during a gradient, at the end of the gradient, we're cleaning off the column. So during every run, I get a brand new column because I just cleaned it. So that's the difference between a gradient versus isocratic. If isocratic works for you, it's fantastic. You're ahead of the game. You get the best separation under isocratic conditions. But gradients give us versatility and give us the ability to, to clean a column.